KWOC News Time 809. Welcome to Brittany on the Bluff, brought to you each weekday by today's computers. Whitworth Gift Chest Jewelers, First Community Bank, and Key Drugs in Poplar Bluff. Thanks for joining us. Like I said, it's all uh, it's all about uh, the computers, the gadgets, the technology. Joining us in the studio today, we have Eric Arnold of Today's Computers, one of our sponsors of Brittany on the Bluff. How are you doing today, sir? Well, I'm doing pretty good. How about yourself? Uh, I'm hunky dory. Always a lot of fun to have you on the show because well, you you actually educate me while you're educating our listeners well, at the same time. Right. And we've already been chatting off the air, and I'm going. Yeah. My mouth's been kind of hanging open. Mm -hmm. oh. What? A little windy out there today. It is a little Threw windy. Threw the old out sail there. up and just cruised on in. <laughs> wow. Glad I don't drive a high profile uh, vehicle. No kidding. We got a wind advisory in, in effect till like 6 p.m. this evening, so it's going to be that way all day. I believe it. So, uh, yeah, be careful out there, for sure. But we were talking off the air, uh, and we wanted to kind of start this show today talking about some scams. Yeah. Uh, periodically. Uh, you do some research for us, or you may get an email or something alerting you about one, and you pass that on to, to us. And um, to me, that's the kind of information our listeners need, something that may help them avoid a, a big problem with their computer. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, and, and I know we've kind of, you know, I don't want anybody to feel like I'm, you know, beating this dead horse over. Oh, no, over these here. are different Just, scams. We've talked about different things <laughs> yeah. from different times, and um one that we have seen locally that has been coming up quite a bit is Microsoft calling and asking to log into your computer because they're seeing all kinds of problems. Well, now let me ask you before we even start, why would Microsoft do that? Well, they won't. That's, that's the <laughs> that's biggest thing. kind of the point, What you're it? going to find is none of these very large companies, Microsoft, Symantec, Cisco, are ever proactively calling you without you initiating a call to start with. Now, mm -hmm. you know, I'm not going to tell you somebody that it works for a company isn't going to call and portray themselves to work to Microsoft to try to sell you something. But that's not the kinds of these calls. These calls are, hi, I'm with Microsoft and we're getting notices that your computer's got lots of problems. Uh, would you let us log in so that we can take a look at these to validate them type things? And um, some of the unknowing unknowing computer users are allowing them remote access to their computers. Um, don't really know what they're doing with the computers at this time, other than we did have one that came in a couple of months ago. The scam, we probably started seeing it some in the summer, and then it really kind of died off, but it's really in the last, I mean, we've probably had three or four come in the door in the last two weeks, so it's really ramped itself up again. Um, but yeah, they basically call, say, we're with Microsoft, we see that your computer's got some problems, would you give us remote access? They install a remote application that gives them access to your computer. Now, in one instance, we can verify it, and I don't know if the customers are catching on and stopping them, but this individual did let them into the computer, and they promptly placed a password on the computer that locked him from all of his data. Um, oh, you know, man. We were afraid. You know, it was an older laptop. Uh, we were afraid to do anything beyond our normal, you know, just regular password removal tools to try to remove the password in, in the fear that we might have destroyed the data. It's right. integrity. Right. Um, user was like, old enough laptop, bought it like on a Black Friday deal used it to play with, there's nothing on there, do what you need to do, see if you can get the data back. Well, we were unable to successfully uh, get, you know, uncrack that password with all the cracks, uh, pack, password cracks that we have to get around those types of things. We were unable to. Now, I'm certainly not going to say that there aren't companies out there that you could have sent it off to, but the customer was not interested in paying for any type, well, you know, of extra, yeah. you know, expense with it. So, you know, let's just, you know... These companies are never going to call you. Now, they will call you back. You know, if you call Microsoft, typically you get a ticket or you turn a ticket online, they will call you. But, you know, you are the one that's initiating that, in, that contact. Right, so right. none of these companies, Microsoft is never going to call you out of the blue to tell you you have a problem with your computer. Try getting them on the phone to help you with the problem when you're willing to pay, and you'll see they're never proactively <laughs> calling you. You know, without well, you know, that's something what I was kind of thinking. Why would they even bother to do something like that? I mean, th that's not their business. No. It, so. No. I mean, it's. But I mean, I can imagine you're you're going about your daily routine. You get this call all of a sudden. It yep. catches you off guard. You're concerned. You don't want your computer shutting down or. No. 
bogging down or yeah, any of that get stuff. Scared. And, uh, yeah, people get scared so and they I think, oh, see. Microsoft calling in. Uh, the ones that we've experienced, typically it's somebody from overseas with a very thick accent. Um, which is very customary if you've ever called any of these large companies. You True. know, a lot of their yes. support personnel is overseas, you know, in call centers. Mm -hmm. um, so, I mean, they fit the bill from the standpoint of it sounds very legitimate. Everybody thinks, oh, Microsoft's calling me. You know, yes, I absolutely, you know, you made the, com you made the software that's running on the computer right. by all means. Have at it. Yes, absolutely, <laughs> you should. So, but they, these companies, they just, that's not their wow. business model. Um, like I said, try finding a place on Microsoft's website to turn in a ticket. You know, um, you know, so that you can get help. You know, it's it's a lot of mazes of jumping through different hoops and stuff. So they are never proactively calling you. So, um, you know, the, and we've had a several variants of it. You know, we had one uh, one lady that uh, they did log into her computer. Um, she caught on to what was going on, so she immediately turned the computer off and hung up on them. Brought the computer to us. We ran scans on it. We found the rem remote tool. We removed it. Didn't find any other problems. Had it a couple of days in the office. She took it back, and within a day or two, they called wanting to know if they could get in and finish up what they'd started kind of thing. Um, really? And they typically ask for a credit card. Boy, they're, they're pretty nervous, yeah, aren't yeah, they? Yeah, they're pretty well, but they're, I mean, you know, they're overseas. They're not worried about yeah. us catching them and indicting them. You know, they're in some anonymous call center sending someplace. They're not worried about the long arm of the U.S. law cracking down on them. Um, you know, that's just something that they're not worried about. Um, and to my knowledge, I mean, I've never seen, I mean, this is a known scam. I know when I had done this, we did this earlier in the year. It may have been January or February last yeah, year when we talked was, about yeah. some scams because uh -huh. I'd kind of looked back. And I know the Microsoft scam is a known one. It was on one of the websites that I'd used. So it's a known scam they're calling. And like I said, then somebody else told me last week, somebody called and said they were from Norton or, or Symantec or, uh, well, first of all, there's a couple of keys. One, um, Symantec is the company, so if they call and say they're from Norton, that ought to tell you right there because right. their products are Norton products, right. but it's Symantec is the name of the company. Uh, so that, you know, would key you in if you if you knew that kind of stuff. Right. So I mean, there's a lot of these things, and, I mean, they're in it to make money. You know, then you run into the same stuff. Okay, so I've given them access to my computer. You know, what do I do with it? Well, you bring it to somebody like us. We'll run full sets of scans on it. We'll look for the things that we know that possibly could give them remote access to it. You know, what are known programs? What are legitimate programs? Um, then you probably ought to, depending on what information you've got on your computer, it's probably a good idea at that point to change your passwords. You know, that's what I tell them, you know, because I don't know, really know what they're looking for. You know, outside of the, if you don't give them a credit card so that they have access to bill you, I don't know what they're looking right. for. Obviously, usernames, passwords. passwords I mean, they, probably, and if you give yeah. them access to that, I mean, they're they have full access to that stuff. You know, there are password databases located on your computer to, that they can grab a hold of and decipher. You know, certainly they may be encrypted, but that's not to say they can't you know get around that type of thing. So, you know, I recommend at that point, yes, you change all of your user, uh, all your passwords on all the websites that you do business with, your Amazons, your Ebay's, anything that could potentially have access to your credit card information or anything like that, buying history, because you'd be surprised what they might glean from that type of stuff. And, you know, you also, I'm not telling you you have to cancel your credit cards. That's a decision only you can make. But you certainly need to contact them or at the least start watching them every day. You know, a lot of these places, like I know Discover, has a zero liability. If you catch it within a one billing cycle, you know, you also might call them and just say, hey, this has happened. I gave them this. You know, do you put a fraud protection watch on it? Do we just close the account and open a new one? You know, I told the story that I lost my credit card or somebody swiped it from me about 20 years ago in Las Vegas, and I didn't know it until I got my first billing cycle, and bam, there's some shoes and some clothes <laughs> and some CDs that somebody All bought with my stuff. And yeah, I didn't get any of that stuff. So Discover was great to work with. I mean, they just basically said, well, can you tell us when you were in Las Vegas? Well, I had the previous month. There there are my charges. So, okay, well, we see that. Write us a letter telling us that what happened. Wrote them a letter. They canceled my card. Took the old, took the charges off, opened me up a new account. I was good to go. So it was a very smooth transition with somebody like Discover. Every one of them, I'm sure, has some sort of fraud protection, maybe just a little different. But I was sold with how Discover handled it. I think my debit card has a $50, you know, limit on it if I catch it within a billing cycle. Um, you know, I did. I was, you know, I've just been so lucky. You know, the Target thing. I was yeah. part of Home Depot. I ended up with a new debit card out of Home Depot because Home Depot emailed my bank or sent me, a, uh, you know, a list to the bank that said I was in that. So the bank recommended I get a new debit card. So 
those are the type of things to watch, be careful of. But like I said, this is one of those deals that they are calling, and they are calling in our area right now. And this is not just Papa Bluff. You know, we had a customer that was over in the fair dealing area. Um, and then, you know, we've had a couple here in Papa Bluff over the last month or so. But we've seen a lot of it recently. So Microsoft, Symantec, these companies are not calling you. If they call you and say, we're from so-and-so, just say, no, you're not, and hang up on them. They contact <laughs> No, you're not. Yeah. They Leave me alone. <laughs> yes, that's exactly right. And don't be surprised if they call back. I think they get kind of hateful. Yeah, then, even. Uh, yeah that's, that's, I'm shocked that uh, that they called the lady back after well, she shut down in the middle I of the I am, process. too, because it's been my experience with a lot of this stuff. It's like a robocall. They don't, you know, they just have machines that are just calling these numbers, and these are guys just sitting there waiting for it to answer, somebody to answer, and then they start their spiel. If they don't get an answer, it just auto-dials. So the fact that somehow they, she remained on the call list after she answered, and right. that they called her back, really kind of threw me for a little bit of a, a loop. I was a little surprised at that. That, you know, that, that did. I mean, it surprised yeah. me a lot to be perfectly So honest really, with when they're calling you, initially, they don't know any... They, Mm -mm. They don't even know your name, probably, mm -mm. at that point. They don't even know if you own a computer. They're just going, and if you don't own a computer, and you say, I don't even own a computer, oh, sorry, we yeah. probably made a mistake, Yeah, and hang up kind of thing. Yeah, well, one lady, wow. was, she was kind of baffled. She's like, well, they called me, and they said, well, you know, they presented this from Symantec. Well, you know, you, your Norton is having some problems on your computer. Well, how did they know if they had Norton? I mm -hmm. said, they're just guessing. Just guessing, yeah. You know, or... You know, because that is one of the most popular 90, ones. Yeah, so. ninety percent of the new computers come with a trial version of that or McAfee right, on it. So right. you know, they may have called you back two days later and said, "Hey, we're with McAfee. You, you know, you've got a problem with your antivirus." Yeah. they're just guessing. I mean, they have no idea what's on your computer. Now it is wow. kind of eerie, you know, because oh well, you know, do you? Well, you know, okay. So I mean, these companies are not going to proactively call you. And I was getting ready to say we had one of our business clients call. You know, we're from Microsoft. You're having problems. She said, "Well, then you really need to talk to the people that take care of our IT at today's computers." You know, let me give you their phone number. Click. They just hung up. Oh. But wow. they called us. I said, "It's a scam. It's going around." She said, "Well, the second I said call our IT department, you know, at, at today's computers, they just immediately just hung up." I said, "Well, yeah, they didn't. They didn't want to deal with that. There was no way they were getting involved in that." Right. Um, so that's just one of those things. So wow. there's several that are out there. Uh, the FBI, actually, I, when I was kind of looking for mm -hmm. this, had a new website. Well, I don't know that's a new website, but it was updated as of November 19th. So it's relatively new about some of the stuff that, uh, uh, some of the scams that were out there that I haven't seen or wasn't as, as up on as I thought. Uh, um, one of the things that uh, a lot of Internet criminals are posting classified acts or auctions for products they don't have. Um, if you receive an auction product from a merchant or retail store rather than directly from the auction seller, the item had been purchased with somebody else's stolen credit card. So what they do is... They go to these auction sites and they put up these auctions for merchandise they don't have yet, and then they purchase it with a stolen credit card after the auction. So they haven't really, you know, wow. they're posting things they don't have, but then they go buy it, and then so you're in essence receiving stolen merchandise. So right. I know several times through this article it, it continued to make the, they wanted to make the point of if it's too good to be true, it probably is. So they're not saying that you won't get the merchandise. You know, say you go to some auction site and they've got, you know, a great deal on an LCD TV, you know, $200 less than anybody else. They're not telling you you're not going to get that TV. Now, the likelihood is fairly slim. But, you know, they may have a stolen credit card or a stolen gift voucher that they're going to turn around and they're going to purchase that TV and send it to you. But then, in essence, you're receiving stolen merchandise. So, you know, you do have an area of exposure there should that person ever get caught. And then, hey, who'd we sell it to? Well, I sold it to Bob in Popper Bluff, Missouri. Well, the next thing you know, you're involved in a big scam. You know, the FBI's showing up. Well, we want proof that you purchased it. We're taking the TV as evidence. I mean, any of that could happen. It's not wow. too outlandish or too far off. So, um, And what a bummer that would be. Absolutely. You know, hey, there goes Mary's Christmas present I bought for yeah. her. You know, I you know, bought a 60-inch TV for 600 bucks. <laughs> you know, and, you know, when they retail for three, you know, 1000 um, so, you know, you just have to kind of think, you know, shop or beware, you know, if it's too good a deal to be true. Now, that's whether it's, you know, whether it's, you know, at somebody at the sale barn selling something in the box that you know is too good. To, I mean, you kind of have these ideas. Um, so that's just one of those deals that you got to kind of pay attention wow. as far as that go. Um, you should also be very careful about providing... Uh, credit card information, bank accounts, or other financial information directly to a seller. If So you're going to notice that most of these websites, like your Ebays and stuff, they want you to use PayPal or they want you to use some sort of a clearinghouse. Do that. Be very leery about transacting with somebody directly that you don't know. 
Um, you know, and I'm going to use. Are you protected if you use PayPal? You, well, P- PayPal does earn, uh, from the standpoint of they're not providing them any of your s- information. So oh, if you initiate okay, a payment you. through PayPal, PayPal saying. is paying them. Right. They You're never not see your, your credit stuff. card number. Yes, exactly. And, and that's no you. different than, okay. I, and I'm going to use an analogy, you know, uh, like on Facebook, we have this Poplar Bluff swap shop uh-huh. thing uh-huh. Um, that's all set up. Um, you know, if you, if you bought, you know, something from, you know, Cindy that doesn't have a storefront and Cindy's like, oh, I really don't want cash. I'll take your check or I'll take your credit card. You're not going to hand Cindy your credit card because you don't know Cindy. So you have to kind of treat these auctions the same way. Be very leery if when you go to an eBay and, you know, you look at 99 auctions and they're all looking, well, we want PayPal or we want a gift card or however we want to pay. And this one says, the only way to pay me is to directly pay me, you know. Be very leery of that. If it's okay. if it's if it's out, out of the unusual, that's where it ought to send up a red flag. Why is this different than the rest of them? Well, are they wanting my credit card? What are they going to do with my credit card once they get it? So those are just some of the kind of things to kind of think as far as that goes. Um, uh, make sure you check the seller's rating and feedback, but be very leery of somebody that's got ten thousand auctions and a hundred percent feedback. Nobody gets a hundred percent feedback. No, they don't. You know, you've dealt. You know. Nobody's there. You can't make everybody happy. Right, the old right, adage. You know, right. as much as you try, you're not going to make everybody happy. And I kind of take that for a grain of salt. Like when I'm reading reviews on products. You know, if a product's got 100 reviews and 98 of them are great reviews and two of them aren't, I kind of have to read through the reviews and kind of see. You kind of find tend to find that the two that aren't, maybe they weren't the easiest people to get along with. <laughs> <laughs> you know, or maybe they didn't read. You, you know, think? I love the one that. Well, or I love the one that says, "Well, this doesn't do what I wanted it to do." No, but if you read the description of what it does, it clearly says it doesn't do what you wanted right, it to do. So right. it's your fault that you bought something that doesn't do what you wanted to do. So be a little bit, do you a little bit leery of a hundred percent feedback, especially if it's somebody new. You know, if they've got twenty transactions and twenty are a hundred percent. You know, I realize that you have to start out someplace, but. You know, be very careful, and and depends on what you're buying too. I mean, like I said, this goes back. You know, if the person's got twenty twenty positive feedbacks, all a hundred percent, but you're also buying a flat panel TV for seventy five percent off, that ought to throw up a red flag. Hey, maybe this isn't exactly what I think it is. Um, this is something else that we're talking about. Um, be very leery about receiving emails or phone calls about your financial accounts. I get one on my cell phone at least once a month. This is re- regard to your credit card. Please call 1-800-whatever. Okay, well, they never announce the credit card. No, which one yeah, it is. Which one it is. You know, okay, well, that's the first thing. Well, first of all, you know, if my credit card company calls me, the same thing we've always talked about, or sends me an email, I'm calling them. I'm not going through a link to the email, which is right. one of the things they talk about here. Don't go directly. If you get an email from Discover Card, Alerting you that you need to change your passwords. Don't follow any links. It could very well be a legitimate email from Discover Card, but you have no 100% way of knowing. If you get an email from Discover Card that tells you to change your password, just click here, delete that email, go to Discover Card, or call them. You know, that works too. Now, I tend to err on the side of caution. The last time I got an email that I'm fairly sure was not legitimate, I went ahead and went to Discover and changed my password anyway. But I went the normal route like I always do right. to pay my bill or check my account or any of that stuff. Don't go directly because you don't know that you're not that website's not being spoofed and therefore not a legitimate website. So, you know, always go there. Or like I said, call them. Don't take the phone call. I mean, don't take the phone call from your bank. What the last time my bank called me, if it hadn't been somebody at the bank that I known that I knew personally, I would have hung up the phone and I would have called them back. And then I would have said, Hey, I just received a phone call from this. So, you know, you have to do your due diligence, too. You know, you can't just bury your head in the sand and say, oh, well, they've called me. You know, you have to do your due diligence because you are putting yourself at a, at a pretty big area of exposure, you know, and not being able to, you know, know for sure. Right. You know, so right. if you get that email, um, uh, that's the, you know, where you can get a spoof site. There are also uh, seasonal items, you know, Christmas items and stuff. That's a big thing with Black Friday coming up. You know, those are the things you just have to be very careful of because that's when these customers are starting people are you know people are a little more vulnerable during the holidays they're a little more well you're buying more stuff you're mm-hmm. looking for good deals because we're typically spreading ourselves out because you know we're not just buying one birthday gift in the month of december we're buying christmas presents so we're all looking for a good deal right right those are just the kind of things that you got to kind of be careful of as far as that goes 
Um, be also be very careful on Cyber Fund, Cyber Monday or Black Friday, bargain hunters advertising, one day only promotions from recognized brands. Uh, consumers should be on the watch for two good emails from unrecognized websites. So, you know, like I said, if you get a website from, you know, and I get a lot of solicitations to buy stuff from, you know, laptops and stuff like that. I no more pay attention to those if it's not something I do business with than I do from the emails that I get that, hey, I'm a company in Nebraska, and would you please order me 20 packages of this toner, and do you accept credit card, and will you accept drop, you know, just drop ship it to my location? Now, there is no way in the world that some company in Omaha, Nebraska is sending today's computers an email to order toner without ever having spoken to me. Why would they? Why would yeah, they? That's exactly why right. Would they? That's exactly right. So, you know, I don't pay any attention to those emails any more than I see the, you know, HP Profoot Generation 1, you know, i3 processor, 4 gig of RAM that I know is a $650 laptop on sale only today for $300. Okay, that doesn't make any sense, you know. So you have to, you have to, you know. Let, like I said, if it's too good to deal to be true, you, you know, you have to assume that. So, you know, you just have to ignore those. You know, that's you know very much like the deposed dictator in Nigeria who has ten million dollars, and <laughs> you know he j he wants to give you fifty percent of that if you'll just let him deposit it into your account. Now that's been around forever, I, but apparently some people are doing something because they just keep going. Yeah. I mean that's been around for. I mean, I remember when I was researching the first time, that's a scam or a similar scam that's been around for 30 or 40 years in one form or another, that there's always the deposed dictator with a pile of money. You just have to help them get it into this country, uh, which in and of itself, even if it was legitimate, is you can't tell me that if a deposed dictator is trying to put money in your account that you wouldn't have some liabilities that he's funneling money into your account. I mean, so, you know, yeah, a little no common kidding. sense has to go a long way. And we you all know, I was talking with somebody the other day, because I, when I hear that one particularly, I think, how could somebody really fall for that? But I was talking with somebody just the other day who knows somebody personally who did. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so it does happen. Well, or know? that's similar to the one that, uh, one that I was reading not too awful long ago that the scam was, okay, so they've got a, a Ford truck on sale. They want $5,000 for it. So you contract with them, yes, I want it. And they said, well, here's what we're going to do. We're having some problems with titling stuff, so we're going to send you $6,000, but we want you to send us the $1,000 back in cash. They're buying your vehicle or whatever. Uh -huh. Well, they send you the money. You send them $1,000. Guess what? The check gets returned. Yeah, You're out the $1,000. It wasn't, wasn't any it wasn't, good to start, with. Good to start yeah. with. And now you send them $1,000, but basically what they've done is they've laundered it. They've got your $1,000, and you're never getting it back. Right. So um, so here were some little tips that they had to, to help you just be more aware during cyber fraud. Do okay. not respond to unsolicited spam or emails. Okay. That's one we've talked about. Don't click on links contained in an unsolicited email because not sense. only could they redirect you to another site, but you could be installing something. Yeah. You know, don't click. Just uh, like so, those people claiming they're with Microsoft. That's whatever, exactly right. Or know. just like if you're on Facebook, stay off the ads on the left and right side. You don't know where they're going. Right. You know, now if it's an ad by Amazon and you click on it, it takes it to Amazon, that's great. But you also could click on that ad that looks like it ad that looks like it's from Amazon and you end up at Bob's house of, you know, jerky and Bob's <laughs> loading you up with, you know, all kinds of stuff in the yeah. background. You know, it's like I told somebody the other day, they were uh, they were quilting. So they'd gone to some pattern sites and their computer was infected. I mean spamware spower spam. Spyware and malware. It's early on Monday. <laughs> Spyware and malware. Uh, you know, they had gone to the website. They downloaded their patterns, but then they had all these pop-ups immediately afterwards. Mm -hmm. So I was asking. We were just talking, and I said, let me ask a question. Do they normally charge for these? Well, yeah, this pattern website out here charges $10 for those patterns, but this place didn't. So well, that's how they're paying for it. You got your patterns, but now you're in my office spending money to have it all cleaned. Right. So, you know, you have to be leery about that. You have to think. If somebody, if, if the legitimate pattern website that you know is legitimate run by a huge company is selling a pattern for ten dollars and this company over here is selling the exact same pattern or giving it to you somewhere along the line you have to think about that why are they just giving it to me now she did make a call well now i know some of them will give you some of the older patterns i said well that's fine and that's something you have to consider but you know that industry so you have to think about that so they're giving me the old patterns the new patterns are ten dollars but they're giving me the new patterns over here what they did was that's how they're paying for it this company that's now loaded you up with the fraudware that now pops up ads all over the time or fake tech support that's how they're paying for it that company allowed them to distribute their software that you probably agreed to legitimately 
when you accepted the terms right, and conditions. Right. Yes, I'm allowing them to install third-party applications on my computer. It's probably buried somewhere in the very small print. So you have to kind of take that concern because it's like she said, well, had I known that, you know, here I'm up here spending money to have my computer cleaned, I'd have been buying those patterns for 10 bucks a piece. But <laughs> she never thought about right. it. So that was just something to kind of take into consideration. I'll tell you, another one that does that is uh, grocery coupons. Yes. Because I was trying to find some online grocery coupons not too long ago, and all of a sudden I started having all this junk popping up. I was like, holy cow, I had, uh, online vault and all kinds of nonsense. Mm -hmm. Uh, just because I was printing out these grocery coupons. About in the last probably four or five months, I can tell you that when we run our first round of malware and spyware, one of the tools we use is looks for what they call um, PUP, potentially unwanted programs. And one of them is Groupon. It installs a toolbar. Really? Mm -hmm. Now, I don't know where they're getting it, if it is somebody that's out looking or if it's coming bundled, but I can tell you that probably 7 out of 10 that we're cleaning now, Groupon is one of the unwanted toolbars that's a potentially unwanted program that's running in the background. So, And Groupon may be a very legitimate company. Right, right. I mean, they I've may actually bought some, okay. some Groupon But they, before, they have yeah. a toolbar that gets installed. So it's not necessarily causing a problem. But this program flags it as, do you know it's installed? Now, we always uninstall right. it. If the customer wants to go back and put it on, it's easy to do. But it does slow your browser down. I mean, that's, uh -huh. that's what, you know, most of what we get when it comes in isn't the, oh, I know I've been compromised. It's my computer has gotten extremely slow and I've got pop-ups. So what you realize, probably before the pop-ups, you probably got stuff running in the background. Uh, I went and looked at a computer on Friday that half of the resources were being eaten up by spam and malware. Wow. So four gig of RAM, two of it was being eaten continually by programs running in the background that they didn't even know were there and being run. So those are just kind of things you've just got to kind of pay attention to. Um, if you do get attachments from customer, you know, from people that you do know, always have your virus program set to run an, a, a scan on it just to make sure so that it flags it. Uh, avoid filling out forms contained in email messages that ask for personal information. Once again, don't give out your personal information to somebody that you don't know. And, you know, if you get an email from somebody that says, you know, hey, click here to do this. You know, obviously be very aware of that. Uh, log on to the, directly to the official website of the business identified in the email instead of linking to it from your unsolicited email, which is one we've talked about. Contact the actual business that supposedly sent the email that actually sent the email to make sure that it's genuine, which is what I'd said about when Discover had sent me some stuff or when Target sent me the first thing, I contacted Target directly. You know, was this a problem? Um, if you're requested to act quickly or there's an emergency, it may be a scam. Fraudsters create a sense of urgency to get you to act, which is what the Microsoft scam is doing. They're calling in, your computer's infected. We need to get access to it so that we can fix these problems for you. And then typically, you know, the one that's my favorite, that's the pop-up, is you're just sitting there working on your computer and all of a sudden this program pops up and starts running, looks like it's running a scan. If you've ever run a scan, you know how it starts and then over a period of time it starts popping up how many infections. This one within uh -huh. one second already pops up 5,000 infections. <laughs> yeah, I mean, just like instantly. And I'm like, wow, that is really a fast scanner. <laughs> but it's fraudware. It's, it's scareware. They're trying yeah. to scare you into buying their product because right. there's always a, when it gets to the end, click here to clean it. And when you click here to clean it, it takes you to the website to buy it. Now, it right. may be a legitimate program. I don't agree with the ethics of right. how they're, how they're, they're marketing trying it. to market yeah. it. That's exactly right. So, um if you receive requests from business or for personal information from a business or financial institution, always look up the main contact information in the requesting company as an independent source, phone book, trusted directory, legitimate billing statement, etc. to make sure. And remember, if it looks too good, it could be, it probably is. And then the last thing it says, if for more information on email scans, the FBI has an e-scam set up at fbi.gov slash scams dash safety slash e-scams. If you go to FBI.gov, you can probably find their cybersecurity okay. portion on there as far as that goes. But they have more information about it, how to protect yourself, and a little bit more information on some of the known type scams and that type of thing. Well, these are these seem to be pretty much an ongoing thing ever since the Internet came to be. Yeah. Or probably even prior to well, the Well, they Internet, were. You know, actually. like I said, the uh, deposed dictator one, I know has been around since the 50s or 60s. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, in one form or another, of course, what's happened is they've become adapted to right. the new technology. Right. I mean, somebody sees a way to make money. And, you know, somebody made a comment to me, you know, 15 years ago, I had a debit card that, you know, it popped up and had a dollar ninety nine charged on it. Well, I caught it. I was working at the bank at the time. So I went downstairs and talked to the lady. And she's like, well, somebody's got your card number. We're going to close it out. She said, we'll open you a new one. I said, really? Two bucks. 
She goes, well, they'll probably hit you $2, two or three times. She said, sometimes they hit people for more. She said, most people think, oh, I probably used my card and just forgot for the $2. I'm sure they do. She said, you have to understand, if they're hitting you for 2 bucks and they're hitting 2 million people in a day, that's $4 million they're making in a day. So, you know, you have to think about it. While they're hitting you for just a tiny little bit of money, if they look at the big scheme of what they're probably doing across the world or internationally, you know, it is some serious big dollars. Um, of course, you know, at that time that meant they had my card number, so I can't take a chance on that. You know, and they could be just fishing to see if it's a legitimate card. You know, we've started getting a lot of phone call hang-ups at the office. You know, they come up, caller ID comes up anonymous. You pick up the phone, you say hello, or it comes up just 888 number. You pick up and hang up. Okay. Most likely, it's not a wrong number. Most likely, it's some of these telemarketing companies fishing for a legitimate phone number. When you answer the phone, some kind of computer says somebody answered the phone. Your number then gets dictated. It's an actual phone number and gets into a database of numbers that's then sold and solicited around. If it never answers or if it doesn't go to a machine, at some point, you probably get removed out of it. But we've started getting a lot of those recently. Um, and I'm sure it's this time of year they're calling phone lists. They, like I said, they never say anything. They just... Wow. They just hang up. Uh, but we, I mean, we're getting, of course, we've got four or five lines in my office, and it seems to roll. What's kind of funny is, uh, of course, the numbers are usually sequential. Uh-huh. You know, so I'll get one on one, and an hour later we'll get one on another. And, you know, and you know, it'll happen two or three times during the day, and then we may go a day or two. So it's something we see quite a bit of. So same type of situation. They're fishing. Well, you know, with the new, um, what, what's the deal that iPhone's trying to come up with? That Apple can, Pay. Apple Pay, thank you. Couldn't come up with that. Uh, with that new Apple Pay, is mm-hmm. that something that you can that you foresee possibly being used in not just paying for something in person, but maybe utilized like PayPal when you're going to a website to buy something or something like yeah. that? And is that going to protect people? It's supposedly going to protect people. You know, that's an interesting twist on how it could be used. I know it's going to protect people if you use it the way that they're talking about using it with their phones. Right. Because the way they talk about it is the way my understanding is you have your Apple Pay account. You walk up to a, a, a retailer. We'll just, since I'm looking out the window, we'll just say a Walgreens, for instance. Okay. So you walk up to Walgreens. They're an Apple Pay customer. You put your finger on the app. You walk up close to their um, point of sale terminal it's wireless it senses your phone you put your finger on it it vibrates your transactions done the reason that it's supposed to be more secure is what is being sent from your phone to Walgreens has nothing about you it has an independent transaction number so the reason that it protects you is if Walgreens gets compromised, all Walgreens is going to get is a bunch of unique codes that have nothing to do with you. Doesn't have your credit card number. Doesn't have your credit card number. Your phone number that unique code address, is nothing. then transacted back to Apple, who then processes the payment through whatever form that you've set it up to do it on. Now, supposedly, people at Apple don't even know what you've bought or purchased. They just maybe know you were at Walgreens. Now, that's a little bit, Apple's not really come up, but that's some of the tech people that I was reading is how this kind of works. That's what they were saying is that's how it kind of goes together is that it's a, you know, they won't even know what the transaction is. So it's supposed to be very secure. Now, my concern about the Apple Pay and the Google Wallet, and now there's a consortium of businesses that are getting together to do it, is we need one standard. You know, I don't want yeah, three standards exactly. running on my phone. And supposedly Walmart... Home Depot, there's about six or seven huge companies that are looking to do their own standard. Now, from the preliminary stuff that I've read about it, there are some security flaws in it that Apple has gone above and beyond to fix. So, at this point, Apple's probably the most secure. Now, Google Wallet, maybe. I haven't researched it as much, just simply because I was working on the show for the Apple. Right, the new sure. six, iPhone 6s. So, um, when that initially rolls out, There's going to be very few mergers, and I think actually CVS was using it with the Apple Pay at one time, and then within the first week, they stopped using it for whatever reason. But I think what will probably happen, back early in the days when we were all doing dial-up, and we all went from 24-4 modems to this 56K standard. Right, I remember. Okay, well, (laughs) there was U.S. Robotics, which was a huge company at the time. They had their own protocols. Then there was a company called Zoom, and Zoom and the other companies had their own protocols. Well, what that basically meant was if... I, as your Internet service provider, had the U.S. Robotics stuff and bought the 56K stuff, and you bought a U.S. Robotics modem, great. We could link you up 56K. If you had a Zoom modem using their protocols, it wasn't going to connect 56K. Right. So what happened is all these companies got together, they formed a consortium, and they came up with a standard 
that they could now use for the 56k protocol. I'm hoping that's what happens with this. Oh, it'll because have it's only going to be really? well. It's, in my mind, it's only going to be as simple as it is for the consumer to use. Right. And the last thing people want are three or four different kinds of pay applications running on their device. They have to walk up. Oh, okay. Well, which one do I want to use? Right. They need yeah. to all integrate well, and they need to use the same standard. Now, obviously, I think if you have a company like Apple who has a higher security standard, but maybe some of the other companies like some other things, that's where they kind of get into. Well, we we do acknowledge you have the best security. Standard. So we're going to adopt your security standard, but we want to change the way some of this stuff does. If they don't all get together, it's never going to be the success that somebody like Apple had hoped it would be because then you're split between too many companies. So you know, agree, I'm hoping yeah. that they all get together over the next 24, 36 months, which is a lifetime in our industry. Um, you know, come up with some sort of an idea that you know makes it easy for everybody to use, can be run out of one app. Just adopt the standard. Let the consumer choose. You know, if I'm running an Apple phone, I'll use Apple Pay. If I'm using an Android phone, I'll use the Google Wallet. You know, then you can have some of these others. But I, I tell you something that was kind of a neat deal talking about these apps and stuff. Have you used the Walmart app to where it, you scan your receipts? I haven't yet. I saw an ad for that the other day. My brother's been using it. He's got 8 or $10 in his account now. So no basically kidding. there's an app. You download the Walmart yeah. app. You set an account up with them. You leave Walmart. You scan your receipt. And the way it supposedly works is it will go around in your area, and I don't right. know what the you know distance is or what they consider your area. And if they find it de- uh, cheaper at another store, they'll refund the money and put it into your account so that you didn't pay more for right. it. And then you can convert that into, an I suppose, a Walmart gift card would be my guess. I doubt they're giving you cash. Right. But yeah. some sort of an account that you can then go up and you can utilize at Walmart. So, you know, if you're somebody that shops at Walmart a great deal, hey, they're just making it even easier to, you know, kind of do your price shopping. You know, I know they do the We Match ads or whatever, but this kind of does that for you without yeah. having to match any ads. You just, when you get done, you go, bloop, you know, providing that you trust Walmart's going to honor, you know, that the fact that, you know, Kroger's running, you know, orange juice 25 cents a gallon cheaper than what you just bought it, and they'll give you the 25 cents, providing that you, tr- you know, trust that they'll do it. But like I said, my brother's been using it about a month, and he's got 8 or $10 in well, his account cool. for doing nothing, to, nothing I'm, different than what he yeah, was going to do. I'm glad to hear of somebody that's actually been using it, because I've seen that ad, and I've wondered about it. Um, it looks intriguing, but I have yet to download it. You just I scan the barcode, it barcode yeah. on your receipt, and it, it does it. And, then I, and I don't something. know if it's instant or how quick it takes, but apparently, yeah, it puts the money in your Walmart account, and then you can do whatever you want with it. Now, I'm not somebody that shops a great deal at Walmart, but my I'm wife does, either. and I think she's been using it. I need to ask her now. You know, I hadn't really thought about it since I, we set it up. So yeah. that's one of those deals you just, we'll just have to kind of check yeah, into. Yeah, let me so know what she says. Biggest thing is consum- consumer beware. You know, and which, uh, again, back on the whole scams thing, you know, do you force, do you think that there's a possibility that someday that they will figure out a way to work out all the bugs and that we won't have to deal with this kind of thing? Or do you think that criminals are just going to keep trying and every time there's new technology come along, they're going to come up with another way mm-hmm. to scam you? That's exactly what they're going to do. They're going to look at, they're always... So there's really not any chance of us not having to deal with this someday. No, I think it'll always be in some form or fashion that we'll have to no, deal with that it. that a shame? Yeah, it really is. I mean, you know, and, you know, we were talking about, uh, you know, before we went on air, which is, I mean, it's actually, I guess it's considered a virus, this crypto locker, which is a scary, scary virus. Uh, basically, once it's on your computer, it locks your information. It's ransomware. You know, they want anywhere from $500 to $1,000. I think it goes up incrementally every day. If you get the purest form of BitLocker, uh, excuse me, CryptoLocker, if you get the purest form of that, there is no way to get your data back. Um, I was watching when this all started coming. Unless you pay up. Well, unless you pay up. And then supposedly that's an iffy thing. Now, the information I was reading not too awful long ago said that they had actually caught the people that, initially did this crypto locker virus really good. they had caught them but now there's variants out there running around which is the reason i say with the variants good luck getting your money you know and they were wanting you to pay them in bitcoins which is that new currency that's right. so expensive that's how they wanted to be paid um that there was a, a 60 i think it was 60 minutes of some show like that some new show that is on weekly and they had a municipality someplace in california that got infected and they had security experts in from all of them i mean they were a municipality and in California, so they were able to get, you know, s- engineers from Symantec and from, you know, McAfee to come in and try to compromise this. No go. They wow. lock it out. There is no getting your data back. That now, is scary. It's extremely scary. Uh, and it depends on what rights you have. You know, we had a customer that got it not too awful long ago, but it only affected their computer. Now, they were on a server network, and it spread itself to the server. But they only had read access to the server. Oh, so they didn't goodness. have access through their username and password 
in order to alter files on the server. So they lost everything on their computer. It was a wipe and reload. Everything wow. gone, all the emails, all the files. But fortunately on the server, we were able to restore from a backup that it did not compromise any of the files because they didn't have the right access. So, you know, that's something that's also very But scary. if they had had access, yeah, it would have been a, it would have been through their whole network. It would have been a catastrophe. Ooh, and it would have locked down all of the... Mm-hmm. Oh, Yeah, and then you're, wow. you're restoring from backups, and that's what in this municipality did was, you know, they restored from their backups. They lost a week's worth of work uh, and then had to restore all their stuff from their backups, and that's even scarier. You know, if you're somebody in my industry, you always want to back up, but you always have to hold your breath any time that you restore from a backup because you're just not always positive about the integrity of that backup because I mean, right. you don't have an opportunity to test it on a, a routine basis. So that's just one of those things that you've got to kind of kind of think about. So make sure you back up your files. Back up your files. Very important. Every day. Because you just no never excuses. know. You really don't know what you're going to be exposed to. No, you have no idea. You and every no time idea you on get online, yes. there's the potential. That is. Uh, you know, so, yes, back your data up because, wow. I mean, I hope you never have to use it. But if you're not backing it up, the likelihood you'll need it is pretty good. That's just Murphy's Law. Holy moly. Well, you got me scared half to death now. <laughs> <laughs> Let's take a quick break. We'll be right back to talk more with Eric Arnold of Today's Computers. He's kind of our tech guru here at KWOC. We're so thankful for him. See what kind of information he brings us. This is good stuff. More Brittany on the Bluff right after this on Today's Talk 930 KWOC.
AWOC News Time 852. Welcome back to Brittany on the Bluff, brought to you, of course, by Key Drugs, Whitworth's Gift Chest Jewelers, First Community Bank, and today's computers in Poplar Bluff. And uh, speaking of today's computers, Eric yeah. Arnold in the studio with us this morning. We've been talking about these scams, and I, I think we ate up most of the show yeah, doing did, it. But, yeah. but, but, you know, it's so important to remind people because, you know, we can talk about these things, uh, you know, over and over, but. Well, and people get Somebody's caught off guard. Somebody's going to get that call. When well, they do, you know? and they get caught off guard. You know, let's be yeah. honest. We're busy in our lives. There's a lot of things going on. You'd answer the phone innocent enough at your house. You're distracted. You're thinking about... You got you two know, or three kids you in, two the three kids going in the background acting crazy. Yeah, and, you just say you're you know? cooking dinner or whatever, and somebody from Microsoft calls, Hey, I'm from Microsoft, and you're having a problem with your computer. Can I get access to it so I can fix it? Sure. What do I need to do? Well, you just go to this website, click OK. We'll take care of the rest, and just please hold. So, you know, we all get distracted in our lives, but this is one that I don't, I hate to see people getting taken advantage of, yeah. whether it be they do exploit your credit card and take money from you or, you know, put a password on it that's not retrievable and then you lost, you know, you know, important photographs or documents or, you know, you're a college student working on your dissertation and it's just gone, oh, man. you know, back yeah. up, back up, back up, back up, you know, keep current antivirus on there and don't let anybody onto your computer that you don't know explicitly and you trust know, them to do that if you, you know, like me i'm one of those trusting people always have been yeah and i've had to kind of retrain my thinking on a lot of this stuff because my mind does not automatically go to the worst case scenario right it tends to go to the good scenario well and i wish i could and do some of that because i don't i always immediately of course i've seen enough of this through the years yeah, and I how people have, act that yeah. it's just immediately i start thinking you know i had a poor young lady came in last week and first thing she said was I let somebody from Microsoft onto my computer, and she just oh. started crying. And I'm like, it'll be okay. You know, let's see what it did. Well, unfortunately, in her instance, we don't think they put a password on there. Um, so, it, you know, we're hoping that at this point she was able to catch them. And she's like, you know, about two minutes into the conversation, I knew this wasn't right. So I just reached over and shut the lid on the computer. I said, well, you kicked them out of the computer at that point. We just don't know what we were doing, you know, what they were doing. So, right. you know, hopefully it'll turn out because then you f do feel like you've been taken advantage of. And this time of year is definitely not the time to feel like that, especially if somebody, because they very well could clean your, I mean, if you give them your credit card and supposedly they don't ask for the credit card up front, they log into the computer first and then that's when they start, hey, you've got so many errors, blah, blah, blah. Well, it'll be $100 for us to fix it, you know. Uh, so, you know. And hopefully, you know, everybody out there listening, none of these large companies are calling you. They're just not going to do it. Just please keep that in yep, mind. Yep, just hang up on them because that's, yeah. you know, hang on them just like you would a telemarketer that you're not interested in talking to or, you know, buying the greatest, you know, I, I realize everybody's looking for health insurance, but is anybody going to buy health insurance from an unsolicited phone call? We get those at the office all the time. We can improve your group benefits. No, you can't. <laughs> <laughs> you know? I don't know you. Leave me you know, alone. That's exactly right. First of all, it's a mark against you, the fact that you just called me out of the blue. You know, I've wasted the 30 seconds of my life listening to this. Actually, I don't, they don't get that wrong. Normally, I don't. Or, you know, and I realize that a lot of these, I can't stand robocalls. Oh, I can't either. You know, it's at least so if you're going to try to solicit something from me, have a person on the other end. But my yeah. favorite is when I say hello and I hear click, 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 click. Uh, may I speak to uh, Mr. Arnold? No, by the time you got the third click is when I'm hanging up because I know at that point it was a computer just robo calling. Me, right. You know, or those sorts, you know, we get one, you know, you know, please call. This it pertains to your credit account. Please call one eight hundred, you know, we can save you money. Well, no, you probably can't. You know, it's just but they're just, you know, they're scammers. Right. You know, my dad's phone service got slammed several years ago, which was the big thing before they allowed you to put locks on it, you know. He didn't do anything. He just all of a sudden started getting a bill from some phone company out in the middle of nowhere that had taken access of his long distance and were running these charges up. Well, he never had an authorization. Well, somebody put a, I, I mean, it was fraud. That's exactly what they do. Now, those kind of companies, I think, get tracked down, you know, preserving the person's diligent enough. You know, we contacted his phone company. They moved these charges back. They got rid of them. We're not ever paying them, that kind of thing. But, I mean, that's another scam that's out there is slamming your phone right. service. Not as and much it now. it your time. It does, of course. So. Yeah. Your time, and your time's worse than how much time did it take to go fix that problem? Right. You know, if you burned a whole business day, that was a business day you weren't doing what makes you money. Uh, exactly. which is run your business. Right. So, you know, that type of stuff is out there. So you just have to be very careful. Oh, wow. Well, I don't think we have time to get into uh, No, neither do topics. I. We'll, talk, we'll, <laughs> we'll, we'll use that year. for the next time. There you go. Yes, there absolutely. You go. I'm Perfect. sorry. We didn't, okay. we didn't really mean to eat up the whole show with scams, but by golly, well, I really important. think that, yeah, I think it is important, and I think that people need to know. 
and and get these tips on how to avoid getting taken advantage of i it burns me up to see somebody take advantage of an elderly person particularly absolutely and that's, oh, that that's burns a, me up. a lot of what we've it seen makes me so mad well and it does and of course you know when you and we're seeing the side that we're seeing the human side of it because they're bringing it into my office and you know first thing they say is you know generally you know i'm on a fixed income i don't have a lot of money to spend on this I use my computer every day to keep track of my nieces, nephews, sons, daughters, whoever's overseas. Right. You know, email, it's what I do, you know, or I'm lost without my games, that kind of thing. You know, we, we see the human side of what these people are doing when they call and exploit them. Right. Um, so, you know, it's, 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 it's very frustrating and it's kind of disheartening this time of year that that kind of stuff happens. And but I hate what it, it does happens to very them emotionally, too. Oh, Not yeah, just absolutely. financially, but the, the way that it makes them feel. To know they've been taken advantage of. Yes. So they've the been best scam. To summarize, know? the best thing I can tell you is: a, nobody from a major company is calling you. B, don't click on any links that are sent to you in emails. If you think it's legitimate, either call the institution that's originating it or go directly to their website. And when you're like on Facebook and stuff, stay off the ads. I mean, those are some of the biggest yeah. things we said. And nobody's giving you anything for free, like we talked about with the quilting patterns and stuff. That's Keep right. Keep that in mind, and you'll be a lot safer out surfing around. Absolutely. Eric, thank you. Uh, As usual. Oh, I'm so excited about Thanksgiving. Yeah, I'm getting here. to go to my niece's house, and she's uh, she's doing the big meal for us. Although we're all, like, we split it up. My brother's smoking the turkey and yeah. doing a couple of things. She's making some stuff. I'm making some stuff. We're making it as easy on my mom as possible. She's just making the dressing. Nice. Hey. And, and, you know, yeah, big, well. big hodgepodge of stuff. It should and be nothing, delicious. Nothing nothing wrong with that. Well, enjoy it. Happy oh, Thanksgiving to wait. all the listeners. <laughs> Thanks again for coming in, Eric. That's it for today. We'll do it again tomorrow right here on today's Talk 930 KWOC.